I am the light that cre and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. Whoa, God creates evil? Surprising. Very difficult to understand. Listen, God does not create moral evil. There is a difference, okay? God is not the devil. The devil is morally corrupted. The moral evil is different to the evil that this verse is talking about. This evil is like, the Bible said, he put, let Joseph go from a dreamer to a prisoner. That's evil, right? Evil in experience. But my Bible says all things work together for good. So watch this. So when, when you are going through an evil period in time, which is a testing of your faith, which is a time of shaping character, most often these pressures and these undesirable experiences happen in life, it is to shape us and mold us to be the version that God wants us to be to handle the position He's calling us unto. Are you with me, everybody? But it's like this. If the metal has to be shaped, it has to be put in the furnace. It's only in the furnace when it's red hot that it can be molded and shaped. So, these are designed, these times of testings are the, the evil experiences, I would say, are to shape us and shape our character. Say amen. amen. Do you agree with me? Yes. If, you be, if you're very honest, you will agree with me that it was during the testing times you learned more of the, from the Word than when everything was honky-dory. Yes. Amen. And God permits those periods in life to shape us and to mold us. But God is not the author of moral evil. Okay? So I just wanted to bring that point across to you. Now, um, oh, where was I? How did I get onto that? I just... Uh, <laughs> the just shall live by faith. Okay. Uh, yeah, I said we should not be complainers and murmurers and grumblers. See... God, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, He led them through the wilderness. And give me 2 and 3. Deuteronomy 8. Yeah. Thou shalt remember. Yeah. Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. Wait, wait. How does God humble? Through putting us through some difficult situations, permitting us to go through some difficult situations. Come on. How many like the promotion that Daniel had? You like to be promoted like Daniel? The promotion came only after the, the lion's den. Come on. Everybody wants a miracle, but nobody wants a problem. But why do you need a miracle if there is no problem? Come on. Are you with me, everybody? So he says, he, he, you have to have the right perspective. So when you're going through some pressure at times in life, maybe it's a husband-wife relationship issue. Maybe it's a children issue. Maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's a, it's a professional issue. Why, God? Why, why, why? No, no, don't say why. In that situation, say, what are you trying to teach me, Lord? What, what is it that you're trying to train? Lord, I submit so that you can mold my character in that period. Stop looking to people and blaming them. You know, when we, had a, when we went through a very, very bad patch in the life of the church, in the early 2000s, and the church was small, and we went through a real big hit, and the church dwindled to only 80 people at that time. And God began to marvelously bless us after that. We relaunched in 2004. Never ever have I ever stood on the platform to talk negative about anybody that has hurt us. I might have shared with some, some of you folk here and there what has happened. But never have I said, because probably God was trying to, not probably, I know God was trying to teach me something. God is not the author of the problem, but God permitted the problem. 
so that he can mold me to become a better pastor. I can be a better man of God, right? Praise God. So we have to understand that sometimes when the boss is angry with you, he's demoted you, he's hurt you through his words, and he said something, and he's hurt your feelings. Hey, stop. What is God trying to do? What is the area that he's now trying to mold? To me, I, I, I'm perfect. No, no. But with divine eyes, I'm very imperfect. I need a lot of maturity. As much as you all respect me, I'm still very immature in the eyes of God. And every one of us. So God will let us go through this. And, and you know, he said, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or not. See, it's easy to keep the commandments when it is, everything is going the way you want. Praise God, this month I got blessed. This bonus came, this increase came, that, and everything. Lord, thank you, Jesus, I return the tithe. Next month, no bonus, no increase. Suddenly a lot of expense comes, and suddenly some, un, un, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 a bill arrives, which I never thought of, I forgot about it, and I have to pay all this. Will you still be faithful in returning the tithe? Will you still be faithful in returning your tithe? Will you still be faithful in bringing your offerings to God? God wants to test your heart. How do you respond? See, somebody hurts you. He's a leader above you. Or he's your principal in the school. Or he's a boss in the office. Or he's a pastor in the church, whatever. He said something. How are you responding? You may be right. He may be wrong. Yet, God is allowing this to happen to shape you. Don't begin to curse the man. Come on. Are you with me? There is something God is doing in my life to train and to mold me. Because if I have to possess that land that God has promised me, I have to grow. I have to grow. If I don't grow in my relationship, when things don't go the way I want, I who dance before him when I cross the Red Sea, will now to begin to produce the image that is inside me and create a bull to worship. Aaron was God's spokesman. Aaron was the one that stretched the rod many times when Moses told him to. Aaron saw miracles manifest through him. God said, you, Aaron shall be a prophet. You shall be a God, he said to Moses. Aaron experienced the power of God. But under pressure, what did Aaron do? He pleased the people. Whereas Moses pleased his God. He was so stirred when he saw what happened. He did not respond like Aaron. He threw the commandment, the tablets down. Because he was so agitated. His heart was sold out to God. You can see the difference between Aaron's heart and Moses' heart. Who was sold out to God? So I need to understand God is dealing with me in every situation that I'm going through. Don't neglect the God aspect in your life, whether you're going through a happy experience or a tearful experience. He said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear because what? That means even in the valley of the shadow of death, where, whichever way you turn, all you can see is death. You cannot see God. You can't hear God. You can't see God. You can't feel God. All you can feel, see, and experience is death. In that place too, I need to have to grow to the point that I know God is with me. Everything that happens in life, the delays, the hard times, 
the testing times, the painful times, the heartaches are all orchestrated. God foresaw what was going to happen to Egypt. And to save his people, he sent Jake, Joseph. We would have liked to go like a prince into Egypt. But God sent him as a servant to Egypt. God, God never forgot Joseph. I don't know where you are in life right now. God has not forgotten you. Turn to your neighbor and tell them God has not forgotten you. You may be riding high, sailing smooth, or you may be down under. Remember, even in the whale's belly, God was with the prophet. He is doing something. Don't rebel. Don't rebel against your leadership. Don't, rebel. Don't have a rebellious attitude. Don't blame people. Yield to God so He can shape and mold you to become the person He intended.